Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. This is the 11th episode of the Move Your Mind Limited Construction Series. We're doing this because every year 190 Australians working in the construction industry take their own lives, and construction workers are six times more likely to die from suicide than an accident at work. On this episode, I interviewed Vesna Newman from the National Association of Women in Construction. Thanks so much for the support. If you'd like to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me. And if you'd like to purchase the Move Your Mind book, you can go to nickbrax.com slash book. Vesna, thanks so much for making the time to come on the podcast series. No worries. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So uh, before we get into it, would you mind just giving a background on yourself and uh, what you what you do and what your organisation does? Yeah, no worries. My name is Vesta Newman. I am the vice chair, um, vice president for the Victorian Nowick um, uh, Association. Nowick is the National Women in Construction um, body that supports women in the industry, and I represent um, Victoria. Um, we are an organisation that uh, really does provide a support learning. Um, and networking ability for women who are in the industry um, and a space for them to um, talk about issues and problems that they might be having as they work in what is a really complex and challenging environment. Yeah, no, great. Thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, and, you know, we've it's been really interesting doing this series, I guess. We've, this is, I think, the 11th or 12th episode that we've recorded now and uh, getting we're, we're getting so many insights and getting so many varied views on on the industry and I guess one of the clear things we've learned is you know so much has happened and so much progress has been made which I think really should be emphasized and talked about not just looking at the negatives but obviously on the other side you know there is so much that needs to be done like like any other industry but I guess in construction there's um there's still a lot of you know mental health issues there's a lot of um there's not enough conversation about it and traditionally hasn't been. So what's in general in the industry, what's your, what's your view on, I guess, um, where it's at now and um, how much it has improved over the last period of time? Um, well, look, I think in my experience in 15 years of working in this space or just over 15 years of working in this industry, it's amazing to see the transition of, um, of this conversation you know, in terms of talking about mental health and what mental health means to people who are my colleagues um, and how they can actually can actually have that conversation. We've had, it's it's gone leaps and bounds to where it was, say, in the early 2000s. Um, but we're not quite there yet. I think that there's still a stigma attached to some extent when someone might say that they're not doing well or they're having problems or if there are people who are returning from Stress leave. Um, and I think that, you know, it's all part of a learning that we're going through as an industry, both in an individual way and, and I guess as businesses learn to understand what that might mean for them when they are dealing with people's mental health. It's not as easy as, say, resolving um, issues when we talk about physical health ailments and maybe people taking time off work to deal with those. Um, mental health, I think, has a a more challenging and complex sort of um, rehabilitation pro process that employers need to think about when they are bringing people back into the employment space, particularly in the construction industry, when we are working in really complex and fast-paced environments, often similar to like startup industries, right? We're mm -hmm. building these mm -hmm. things. We've got short periods of time. We've got, you know, large budgets and, you know, you have a very sort of programmed um, timeline in which these things need to do to be done in and yet you know what we can't sort of factor in when we talk about programs is how people um, heal um, in both you know mentally I think is, is one of those things that you actually can't put a timeline around so um, while we've had massive progress I think that we've still got some ways to go but it's getting there and it's getting a lot better. Which is the main thing. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's sort of, there's always going to be progress to be made, but as long as it is moving forward and there's that concerted effort to to move it forward, that's, you know, that's all we can really ask for. Uh, so in, in the organisation you're involved in, what are, are you able to share some of the conversations that are happening 
around mental health, um, some what you're doing in wellness and mental health and, and that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess as a representative of Now Week, we offer a number of different conversations that we have around mental health and focusing on women and women's mental health. Um, you know, our industry, it's really, um, you know, we only have around 30% of women in the construction industry. So it's not a huge number when we think about how um, much our, our industry takes place or how much about people, how many people work in the industry within Australia, I should say. So 13% isn't, isn't huge. Um, and the challenges that we face is how people sort of, how women identify and and deal with some of the issues that come along with working in such a sort of high-paced, complex environment that isn't so male-focused, right? It's a, um, it is a traditionally, you know, masculine industry. It yeah. has been borne out in a way and paved out in a way that does suit men more than it does women and they're the kinds of conversations that we have a lot as part of now week in terms of how we can drive women to return back to the workforce after they've taken periods of time um off from having children or from study or how we can you know encourage women to enter the industry in the first place and what do they need to actually make the industry more appealing to them um i think what we find when we have these conversations is that it's that safe environment, you know, physically and mentally safe to ensure that when they talk about how they're feeling, women are, you know, I think in this space can generally be more intuitive and open to, up to discussion, that they're not going to be, you know, questioned or criticised or judged upon, that those things and those conversations are able to take place in an easy way. So we provide a space for that for them to have these conversations. And I think that's really important. You know, we also offer opportunities for education in this space too. We offer a number of wellbeing um, products and services. You know, even as a non-for-profit, we have an EPA service that we provide um, for our uh, members. And that, you know, and I need to preface the fact that our members are not just women. We actually open up our membership to men and women because we mm. recognise that it's important to have allies in the industry. So we offer EAP services with to, you know, offer that extra level of comfort that people don't feel like they can contact their own employee AP service. We offer, you know, um, networking and conversations with our members um, in every state as part of our councils. Um, and we offer education opportunities and learning spaces so people can learn how to deal with certain elements of our industry to um, advance their knowledge and awareness, whether it's, you know, looking at leadership or, uh, you know, looking at um, specific areas within the construction space, like, you know, whether it's finance or, um, you know, uh, I forgot what I was going to talk about, um, whether it's finance or, um, you know, environmental areas, sustainability, you know, we, we offer sort of a opportunity for learning as well. Yeah, well, that's great. And I think it's, um, you know, even just having this conversation about raising the awareness about, you know, women in the construction industry, having that conversation, you know, you talking about it here, I think it's a huge step forward. And um, like you were saying, a male dominated industry, it's something that we really need to drive that conversation forward and make that change and make it become more palatable to both genders and you know that's I guess that's what it seems like it's heading that way I mean what 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 is currently the percentage of male do you know roughly what percentage male and female in the industry it, so, it roughly so is in, in construction it's 13 percent women okay um, yeah. but, but you know what's not as good is in trade so actually in on tour work it's only two percent right. and it's you know it's areas like that where we you know we do ask the question of what it is that that is prohibiting women from entering into that area of the industry um is it you know uh perception of what it might be when they actually enter into that space how they might need to work who they might be working with you know we you know there is a fair bit of research going into how we can change the um perceived notion of what it means to be a woman in, in trade or a woman on the tools um, and I think that's going to be really important, particularly as we look at what the future looks like in this industry. In Victoria alone, you know, I think it's something like seventy-six percent of our of people who work in Victoria work either directly or indirectly in the construction industry. 
And to have only, mm. you know, 13% of that be women and 2% of women in trades, that needs to change. Mm. And I think that mm. we need to look at opportunities of how we can destigmatize the industry and make it really open for uh, women to join and to make it like be perceived as a really positive environment to work in. Because, you know, in my experience, it really is. I've I thoroughly enjoyed the industry. I get a lot out of it. I get a lot of satisfaction of what I do. Um, and it's, you know, the question is how do we change that? And is it around how, you know, what what the needs are of individual people? And is it that it's perceived that maybe if you work in this industry, you, your needs are not going to be fulfilled in that way, whether you need to take care of your children or your parents or if you have, if you leave the home caring, things like that, um, how do we, you know, remove those barriers for women to join. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're going to be loading up other groups. And you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events. We've got courses. We've got huge amounts of value. The ability to share information, share ideas work in groups together to to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it, and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And um, yeah, it's interesting that, you know, I've spoken to quite a lot of women in the industry now, and a lot of them have had the exact same viewers you where you know they love the industry it's such an enjoyable place to work I think there's that stigma that people don't really understand what it means to be part of that industry and um it has sometimes turned off before they even look into it as an option which you know that conversation needs to change has has, so that figure is really low has that improved is that an improved figure from what it used to be uh the two percent in trades, no, but it does need to improve. The thirteen percent is sort of getting there. There has been yep. a number of, um, uh, uh, I guess, gender targets that have been put in place around Australia to ensure and in, and increase participation of women in the industry. And I think that they um, work to a certain extent. But I guess what you know what needs to change, I think, is how we operate in the industry. And I I think that in order to increase participation, we need to look at things about how we advocate and manage people um, and what they need from their workplace. And I think mental health is a big one because, you know, people bear different um, roles and responsibilities in their life. And I think that, you know, the load of if you're a parent, what that means for you is very different to if you're not. And in in the industry, when you... We, we often see that, you know, uh, women will leave to have children and they won't necessarily come out back because they don't feel that they can be um, participate wholly in the industry because of the demands that it requires. So we need to look at ways that we can improve those statistics for men and women who are returning from uh, parental leave to provide them opportunities to rejoin the industry in meaningful ways. Um, and whether that is looking at, you know, jobs that are permanent part-time in their areas of specialty and skill, um, or if it's how we operate as an industry with hours, you know, we're notorious for these incredibly long hours which actually drive a lot of stress and strain in people, how we can reconfigure that to make it more appealing for people to come back and work. You know, these are conversations that are being had and need to continue to be have had to ensure that we improve our industry and to drive the numbers up for women's participation and for general participation, I think, because um, if we don't take stock now, we will probably find ourselves at a loss in, you know, in years' time when people don't want to join the industry because of the challenges that they see and that it doesn't necessarily serve their purpose. And I think that as generations progress, you know, I. It, people may not want to participate in such stressful 
environments of work. So we need to look at how we can change those environments now. Absolutely. No, I couldn't agree more. And yeah, well, thank you for sharing all of this. And I think it's been really insightful and, you know, great on this episode to be able to focus on on that side, on the female side of the industry and, you know, have more of that conversation. We haven't really been able to talk as much about it on other episodes. So I really appreciate you, you know, making the time and sharing everything um, that you have on, on, on this episode and, uh, and coming on here. So we, we finish every episode with five closing questions. So mm-hmm. these can just be sort of whatever answer comes to mind. Um, right. Nothing too crazy. So um, the, the, the first one is what's your best childhood memory that comes to mind? Oh, when I was seven, I got my first bike. It was great. <laughs> nice. I it love that. Training wheels and I loved it. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. And, and I think, and what comes up on these ones actually is every time it's so, sort of always these memories of, you know, these things that aren't as common now where, you know, we're living in a world where kids are, you know, dominated by screens and all that kind of thing. And I just missed that where I was, you know, in a park and kicking a football around or whatever it was. So it's, it's nice hearing those ones, you know, getting a bike and the excitement you have as a kid from that. Absolutely. What would you, what do you think is, the biggest burden uh, on mental health in society at the moment? Stigma. It's still stigma. And I think that even though people do talk about it more, I think that, you know, to talk about it um, truthfully is still incredibly hard and to talk about your personal experience can be incredibly um, challenging and isolating. Yeah. No, I think that's, yeah, very, very important. Very true. Uh, what's your personal definition of happiness? Um, I think, oh, I mean, I, I think feeling full. You know, I, mm. I, I often think about that cup, right, whether it's full or not, and I, you know, and even just sitting here yeah. now, like my cup's full, I've got, two really cute whippets sleeping upstairs and I know my husband's going to come home and he's you know we're going to go out for dinner tonight and I think about my family and getting ready for Christmas and I think my cup's really full and that makes me happy I love that so it's that's practicing gratitude which is so important but so yeah it's a really yeah yeah, it's a really good point what are you most afraid of um I have I probably have two like Physical things are like snakes. I'm terrified mm-hmm. of snakes. But, you know, I'm afraid of not um, achieving certain dreams. And I, and I don't necessarily know what they are yet, which is very random. I think that I have a really great and successful career and happy life, and but I'm not sure if I, um, I think, you know, they're, they're my, my biggest um, fear is not necessarily achieving everything that I set out to do. Yeah, no, I, I definitely share that one with you. Um, so final one, what are you most proud of? Oh, I think I'm really proud of um, what I've been able to achieve in life, in both my career and my personal life. And I think my career is something that I, 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 I love what I do as a professional in the construction industry and in my discipline. I'm so proud of the role that I get to play in our industry. And I, I just, you know, it sounds you know, time is to talk about it here, but as someone who works in this industry, being able to build something that is tangible and see that end product and be mm. able to go around my state and other states and other countries that I've worked in and go, oh, I've worked on that project. I was part of that metro tunnel. I was part of that road. That just makes me really proud and I, uh, that really fills me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's really interesting because we've had so many people say that same thing about this industry. You know, one of the... Oh great things about it is you know you can go and look at a bridge or look at a building or you know physically see something that tangible aspect of I was part of building that and that's there often forever so it's like a pretty amazing thing um, especially in such a digitized world now to be doing you know these real tangible things. Yeah what's really funny is my dad worked in the industry as well and so he uh, worked more on the building side and I'm more in um, main infrastructure and so he refers to um, buildings in Melbourne that he built, and I refer to roads and tunnels that I was on. So it's not very but I might have better. So yeah. I love that. That's so good. 
Um, yeah. And finally, where any for anyone listening, where where can they go? I'll put this in the show notes, um, so there will be a link where they can go. But if they want to look up um, your organization's website or anything else, where where should we send them? Yep, go to narwick.com.au. We have chapters all around Australia and we love to have um, people come to our meetings and greetings that we hold monthly and those who want to join us and be volunteers as part of our chapters, we're always welcome to new members joining in. Great. Well, that, that again will be in the show notes so you can just click on the link and um, and check it out. And, yeah, thank you again for making the time. Really appreciate it. Love love everything you talked about. Um, I'm sure this will help a lot of people. And, yeah, thank you again for for making the time. Boris, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks to Vesta Newman for joining me today for Move Your Mind. If you'd like to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me. And if you'd like to purchase the Move Your Mind book, you can go to nickbrax.com book.